Hello everyone, my name is Saiken and we're going through the XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen Guides. Uh, today's uh, topic is going to be Resistance Haven Management. As always, a shameless plug, if you enjoy the guides uh, and my content, please feel free to subscribe and leave a positive comment in the section down below. Uh, this is going to be a quick run through one of the most important aspects of uh, Long War, which is Haven Management. I thought lengthily about where to start uh, from a topic perspective. Uh, with the first deep dive guide and probably haven management is uh, the one feature that will um, determine and dictate a lot how you play the game on the strategic layer so that's why i uh, decided to start with it essentially it is uh, haven management is a representation of your resistance operatives from uh, xcom that work in the areas that you have already um, contacted. In order to even get a uh, haven management option, you need to contact an area and uh, stay in contact with that specific area. Um, when you do a haven management, uh, the um, operatives in that area will perform tasks that you can choose. And uh, I will go through uh, the viability and the strategy of each of the tasks. Let's start with the uh, uh, four topics that each of the uh, resistance operatives can do. And then we're also going through uh, the option to select soldiers as ha uh, or to select soldiers, um, scientists and engineers at ha as haven advisors. Let's start with the um, first uh, bucket here. If you're going to put um, your operatives um, on either of uh, these um, four options that they can do, supply, um, gathering of supplies, uh, recruitment, intel, or hiding, um, that essentially will um, uh, will uh, dictate how the uh, how much credit the game will give you for that. Uh, so long-winded way of saying, if you put everyone, uh, for instance, on supply, uh, that means uh, the game will uh, accumulate six um, soldiers um, or six resistance operatives, giving uh, giving you in this particular region credit for supply, and that will uh, raise your income at the end uh, of the month. Um, let's look uh, through the four different tasks um, and then we talk a bit about uh, why this is way more complex than it might sound on the uh, surface. Supply uh, will um, let your resistance operatives gather supplies. The number up here in the income section uh, shows you uh, the amount of income that you would gain for an entire month of only gathering supplies uh, with the set amount of um, of um, uh, operatives. If you were to put uh, people on recruit, um, they will uh, do two things. Number one, recruit additional resistance operatives. You can have up to 12 in a specific in each of the area. Um, additionally, they will offer you new rookies that you can recruit, in this case, from uh, Central um, Central Asia. And as you can see, now that I've shifted everything, the income has dropped to zero. So if you don't have anyone on supplies, there will be no income uh, from uh, the Haven management. Third one is Intel. Intel uh, allows you to spot out uh, missions. Missions uh, are always available. They happen kind of behind the scene. Um, essentially, missions spawn. And then depending on how fast your Intel gathering rate is at some time between spawn and the time that the uh, mission takes place, uh, you can um, uh, you can observe them or detect them. And only after detection, you even have a chance to uh, participate in this mission. What can happen at times is that you detect the mission an hour before it happens, uh, effectively rendering it impossible for you or nigh impossible to um, do the mission. And the uh, last option here is hiding. Hiding um, uh, means that they are doing nothing uh, but to make sure that the uh, level of vigilance in the area does not uh, improve and rather decrease. So um, if you're doing a lot of um, missions and have a lot of activity, what will happen is that the level of vigilance of uh, Advent will skyrocket so that Advent is very keenly aware that something's going to happen here. Uh, that also means that there is a chance that they will try to target your resistance operatives with a, um, uh, with a terror mission. 
uh, trying to kill them off. Uh, there are various uh, terror uh, missions or defend uh, defend missions where your real um, uh, resistance operatives are at stake, and the resistance operatives thus uh, could be killed off. A few things before we go into uh, this here as well. Uh, up to three resistance operatives um, uh, can be faceless ones. Um, faceless ones do not only not uh, offer you any benefits, they will actively work against you and uh, try to sabotage you and will help um, Advent um, to make it more likely that a retaliation mission is securing. So first question there, how do you get rid of them? Pretty uh, simple answer. You're putting a Haven advisor in here. Haven advisors have two functions. Number one, uh, they can spot out the faceless ones. Um, number two, they get give a bonus uh, to something in particular. Uh, what do I mean with a bonus? Uh, supplies uh, mm, uh, can be multiplied uh, by having an engineer uh, as a Haven advisor. So if everyone's on supplies and you put a Haven engineer in there, uh, you would gain even more supplies. Um, scientists uh, mm, help you uh, with Intel. Um, so as, uh, if you put everyone on Intel and put a scientist in here, you will gather even more Intel and recruitment um, can be supported by any of the soldiers. The higher the rank of the soldier, the better. And if the soldier has an officer rank, that also cumulatively helps you to, um, to uh, increase the chance of spotting out uh, the um, faces ones and it will cumulatively increase the chance of recruiting. Now let's talk a bit about um, uh, strategy and optimizing the Haven management uh, after I explained the details. So the strategy to optimize the Haven management uh, at the beginning of the game is to use this, in my pers uh, personal opinion, to use as much intel as possible. You want to get missions for various uh, reasons. Number one, missions will equate in uh, to uh, to experience for the soldiers. You want to level your soldiers to keep up with the ever increasing threat of aliens. Number two, um, uh, the missions also or Intel will be the only defense that you have uh, to spot out early enough any form of aggression that, um, that uh, the enemy will throw at you. So let's say they want to invade your, um, your uh, country uh, um, and uh, uh, break down the resistance um, cell. Then, of course, you want to make sure that your um, that uh, that you. Uh, find that out as soon as possible. Usually that uh, the type of mission is called troop transfer and if you're um, interrupting that and successfully beat the mission, uh, the retaliation mission will not even happen. Um, I would recommend you to go on with an all Intel or near all Intel strategy because uh, uh, you could make an argument and say, hey, why wouldn't I kind of uh, split it up evenly? Um, the answer to that is it's probably one of the worst things that you can do in long war there is an exponential curve meaning if you're only putting two soldiers in there that is by far inferior to having three resistance operatives uh, take care of a job uh, and that is again inferior to having more resistance operatives uh, take the job as soon as you um, have a second um, a second area um, i would probably make sure that you fill um, up the um, uh, the resistance operatives. Many of the beginning missions will give you two or three additional resistance operatives. That is great uh, because once you have a roster of 12 resistance operatives, you can go all out on Intel. Um, always try to expand at least once or twice and uh, be very clear and uh, decisive about what you want to do. What I mean with that is you should have one area where you are farming missions um, and where you are going to increase the vigilance level. That way, you can be sure that Advent will concentrate all of its um, uh, all of its forces in that particular area. And the spillover effect of um, the other um, um, adjacent areas is marginal. Yes, the vigilance in the other areas slowly increases, and yes, the force uh, the strength level in the adjacent areas also slowly increases, but not 
nearly as much as if you were to spot uh, missions all around in all of uh, the areas. Um, the other areas should recruit to the point where your main area where you're farming missions maybe has a vigilance level of 7 to, uh, to 10, maybe 11. That's the point where uh, not many attractive missions will pop up anymore. Uh, so you should focus in, in that particular scenario on slowly but surely liberating er uh, areas. Let's talk about liberation real quick. Uh, Intel um, also will give you um, or will pave the road towards um, liberating an area. Liberating an area is a five-step process. You will get certain missions after uh, uh, after one another. Uh, basically, the first one is locating of a, a location of information, and there are two further missions. Then there is uh, an, an Advent Tower mission, which is very um, similar to the Network Tower mission, um, the second last mission of the uh, standard campaign. Once you've beaten that uh, tower, uh, the last mission will be to infiltrate, so to speak, the base um, of um, of this particular area. Once you have cleared that base, which is a relatively uh, difficult mission, um, you um, have liberated the entire um, area. Once an area is liberated, and that's important to know for Haven management, uh, Intel only will uh, point out if there is um, espionage going on or if troop transports are happening. Intel will no longer do anything um, other than that. There will be no uh, guerrilla operations missions popping up. Um, and the core strategy of managing is basically to liberate an area. And once an area is liberated, uh, you will switch to supply because liberated areas have a massive multiplier for supplies. Uh, so you will get an abundance of money once the area is liberated. You have 12 resistance operatives there. You basically put everyone on supply and put a resistance advisor if you can spare it an extra engineer in there and you will be relatively rich from time to time you can switch back to intel to double check if uh, your area is being invaded and as you uh, expand and expand uh, note that only areas can be invaded that are adjacent to a hostile area so let's say i would have that entire continent and up here uh, in siberia there is uh, only a connection to um, to this area and this area and both would also belong to me there would be no way that that can be infiltrated hence i can uh, pretty safely put that on uh, supply um, just to uh, con uh, just to basically continue um, uh, getting a steady stream of money. Now there is one downside to it, and I will uh, speak about uh, the downside of that strategy as well. Specifically, newer players will find it incredibly difficult um, to deal with a lack of supplies. The first uh, four five month of the game will always uh, will be always short on money, which makes it so so important that you do not waste your uh, resources there are only a very few uh, there are only very few missions where you can uh, even gather corpses uh, because most of the missions do not allow you to gather corpses and once you can do that you should be extra careful to uh, to not uh, waste that the other money is only coming from smash and grab missions which is the standard supply run uh, mission so to speak and that's your entire income there's no other income than that if you're playing it uh, with an intel based strategy the advantage of the interbase strategy is if you can deal with a lack of supplies and if your um, tactical um, uh, fighting is good enough to cope with it, you will have no problem on the strategy layer. And rest assured, the majority of all uh, runs in um, Long War are lost on the strategy layer and not on the tactical layer. But if you uh, fail missions over and over, might be a sign that you need to work on your tactical gameplay um, to, uh, to make that Intel strategy work. If you're really struggling, what you can do from time to time is uh, just uh, reduce the intel and put a little bit, uh, uh, put everyone on supplies for 10 days. That will at least give you some break. One last thing uh, to uh, note about uh, the intel gathering. Um, there's a set amount of, um, uh, of missions that can occur at the same time per area that's between three and five uh, missions. It'll increase over time. I don't want to go into the math of it, but essentially 
uh, what it boils down to is uh, once you have discovered all of those missions, which uh, if you put everyone on Intel, happens relatively quick in quick succession. Once you have done all of that, there are no, uh, and once you've done the missions for um, 14 uh, days, so two weeks, there are no additional missions, which means if you truly want to optimize your gameplay, put everyone on Intel. Um, once you have 12 uh, uh, resistance operators, um, slap uh, the scientist in there just so you, that you get that extra intel. Make sure that you discover all of the missions, staff all of the missions, uh, and once that's done, put everyone back on supply management, uh, change it to an engineer, and just keep optimizing it bit by bit uh, and try to, uh, to get there. And the very last the bonus advice is do not underestimate the importance of Haven advisors, specifically soldiers. Soldiers are the only ones who can spot out um, the faces ones. So whenever I'm having a downtime and I don't really need full, full, full um, uh, uh, supplies, I tend to use actually some of my highest level soldiers. I don't forget about them because you can still, when a mission pops up, take them out of the Haven Advisor role. Uh, but I put them as long as I can in the Haven Advisor role just to maybe trigger a mission where you can uh, kill a couple of uh, the faceless ones. And once they're cleaned out, you can replace them with uh, normal uh, resistance operators. Good, that was longer than expected. I wanted to keep them to 10 minutes, but the topic is a bit more complex and I felt it was necessary to go through it in depth. If you liked it, uh, slam the like button and leave a comment down below if you have a different strategy. Thanks and see you in the next guide.